Yo, 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 yo. Hello and welcome to this bonus good shit. Welcome from me and my buddy up there, Naughty Norm. All right, Naughty Norm. Feeling I naughty? Know. I'm good, uh, man. I'm always good, baby. That's how I fucking roll, man. Is this my buddy over in New Jersey, head honcho of Naughty Norm's hot sauce, of course. And, uh, of course, you're here with me, 420 Chili Sash, as is normal. And, uh, yeah, wanted to just give you a chance to get to know this cool motherfucker up here. I came across Naughty Norm a while ago because of a sort of ethos we share. I noticed he had a very similar kind of fuck censorship way of functioning that I've got. We've got over here at 420 Chili, our fucking um, feeds, I imagine, get the same amount of uh, community guideline warnings <laughs> as our mate up there, Naughty Norm. Norm, where did your naughtiness come from? I know where mine's coming from. It's a, it's a lifelong thing for me. Authority figures always tried to fuck me in the ass ever since I was a tiny little kid because I'm, uh, what's the word I want? I've always had a relatively quick mind and a fast wit. And when you add uh, authority figures over you, be them teachers or professors or policemen or whatever the fuck. So they always felt threatened by it and got up my ass. And so that was why I fell on the Lenny Bruce side of things in my attitude, which was my right to offend you is much more important than your right to remain unoffended. Um, so fuck you. That's that's kind of how I got to it, and that's kind of how we do it, man. That's how we roll. What about you? Where's your naughtiness come from exactly? Honestly, man, I think it. Uh, I believe it stemmed from just troubled, just a troubled life. Honestly, it just was always hassled, harassed by everyone who should have been supportive. You know what I mean? Like, I always had all these people that I looked up to. And they were negative influences all my life. And essentially, it just rewired my brain looking up to these people. And then I like, eventually, I snapped and I was just like, look, fuck these people. Like, why am I looking up to these fucking assholes for? Like, why do I? Your approval. I don't. I don't need anyone's approval. I need my own approval. I need. As long as I'm happy with whatever I do, that's all that matters. So I, <laughs> I might have been like five, six years old when I finally snapped and was just like, fuck these people. Like I was way too young, way too young. So yeah. I was out there just being a little hole again, smashing bottles against buildings and breaking. <laughs> <laughs> Started right that's there. What I like to hear. I'm I'm oh. coming from Britain in the in the early 1980s. So being a little hooligan was kind of what we did there. Do you know what I mean? Hooligans in England in the 80s. That was kind of the way. Although I was in a different vein myself, to be honest with you. But dude, respect to you for banging your own drum and respect for you for not going the way of all the other people. Yeah. There's a few dudes in the hot sauce world I know. Um, I can think right now of the capsaicin cartel over in Canada, for example, their boss man over there, El Yefe. Um, similar tattoos to you, actually. Strangely enough, when you throw in the devil's horns, it's like I'm watching him throw the devil's horns. I love it, by the way. Great fucking ink, man. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> when did you get your first ink? I think it was my, my mom made me wait. And well, she didn't make me wait. I could have got a tattoo earlier and I wanted to, but she she was said if I waited till I was 18, she'd buy my first one. So I was like, all right, it'll give me time to think about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I thought I was gonna have this elaborate tattoo planned out, which is great. But I have ADHD like a motherfucker, so everything's out of sight, out of mind. And I forgot that my mom was getting me a tattoo until the day I was getting the tattoo, and I had no idea what I was gonna go get. <laughs> And what was it in the end? What was in the end? I get. I still got it. <laughs> my uh, out there. I got a Chevy bow tie on my wrist. Nice. My first car. I used to. Uh, I used to race. Race Chevy. I love it, man. I love it. I I got mine by accident. The first one I got by accident was because of RoboCop. Um, 
we we tried <laughs> okay. to that's that's how old I am. We tried to uh, I was like uh, in my early teens, fourteen. That's how old I was. And in London, it, by Soho, Chinatown area, was a kind of cinema with a bar where you could get served when you were young, you know? And so <laughs> we used to go there to get served, you know? And we went there to go and get served one night, and it was one night, one, let's say, around about 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, we were 14, you know? And uh, the fucking place was closed up because they had a premiere of RoboCop 2 going on. Puts me, there you've got my age right there. RoboCop 2 was being premiered, <laughs> and so we couldn't get in. And so we walked around the corner and around the corner, there was a strip joint that amazingly let us in, but it was six o'clock in the evening. So there was like no action of any description. We sat there in that strip joint ordering like, you know, mixed drinks like teenagers, like I'll have a vodka with whiskey in it, please. That kind of shit got loaded and then stumbled upstairs to a Chinese restaurant, which was run by tri triads who were essentially very rude to us for the next two or three hours, but served us alcohol and then stumbled upstairs again. And there was an illegal tattooist in the attic, you know, like in the, in the room at the top and uh, decided to get fucking tattoos. So he took a gun with a needle on it. that was just sitting in a glass of water. He scraped the blood off the needle and he tattooed all three of us with the same needle. And uh, <laughs> my first mate got a Playboy bunny on his arm there. Uh, my second mate got a Versace son. That was fashionable at that time. Also on his arm. I had the smart idea because I saw the other two tattoos. Now, fucking shit they were. I was like, I'm going to get mine on my back. So I've said, like, I don't know what I want. And I looked at the wall and there was some kind of thing. I've learned later it's a Celtic rose, actually. And uh, then I uh, I was like, that. So I took my top off and he went on my shoulder here. I still got it on my shoulder here. And he went for it. And when he went for it, it fucking hurt, man. And I kept falling off the chair. Do you know what I'm saying? And I, my tattoos like got lines coming off of it. Rank, rank, where I was falling off the chair. And uh, then we all of us just kind of blacked out and woke up covered in vomit and our own blood in the gutter outside the strip joint slash Chinese restaurant slash tattoo parlor. The sunlight of the morning was coming on. And what woke us up was an American man's voice. And the American man's voice was going, boys, fucking boys, boys. And then we opened our eyes like that. And standing over us was Peter Weller, the actor who played Robocop, with a cigar in a trench coat with a fucking hat. Obviously, he'd been to the premiere the night before. And he looked at us on the floor, covered in our own vomit and blood. And he went, you boys fucking disgust me. And then spat on the floor and walked away. And that was how I got my first tattoo. Yeah, loved it, man. Fucking loved it. Never looked back. Never looked back, man. Never looked back. That's mm. way cool. My first tattoo story, shit. <laughs> nah, man. I, I, everyone needs the th the difference between different people is we all have different stories, but we get bored by our own stories because we hear them all the time. I never heard a person who, when they get into a story they got, it's not fascinating. For example, tell me, man, how long have you been in a hot sauce game? This this year is my fourth year uh professionally as a same as us as LL, uh and insured business uh, how how'd you get in what was your way in i i used to be a chef um i worked in restaurants most of my life i, I always pursued art um ever since i was a kid and it always it was always one form after the other so i started off drawing as a little kid and then by like eight years old I got tired of eating spaghetti and meatballs every night. Sorry, mom. <laughs> uh, I, I started watching Food Network. I taught myself how to cook at eight. Uh, that became fascination with that, um, which kind of like built all, all my life. Even still, I feel like it's still constantly scaling up. I'm constantly still learning new, new things like weekly. It's mind boggling. <laughs> So how did you see over then from, from that into hot sauce then? Because you professional chef dudes earn a lot of money and get a lot of pussy. So why would you become a hot sauce dude? We don't get any pussy apart from our girlfriend. Uh, 
And I mean, there's no time for the pussy as a chef, you know, I kind of (laughs) suck. All that shit was, was, uh, unhealthy family, (laughs) family, uh, conditions, uh, shitty, shitty hours, shit, shit, sleep schedule addictions. You know what I mean? The kitchen was rough, but that's how it is. It's, it, it is what it is to so keep it running. It's a crazy oiled machine, but <laughs> it's, it's well oiled. So what but, brought uh, you then? What was the thing that brought your foot over from professional cook to professional hot sauce bod? My last, it was my last restaurant that I worked for. Um, I worked for a chef that was like very open and he's like, you know, anything you want to order, order it. Anything you want to try to do, let's do it. And I had this wild, wild idea. I was like, yo, man, I was like, let's order some ghost peppers, man. Let's, <laughs> let's make some spicy sauce. Let's fuck these people up out there. Cause I'm tired of complaining all the time. You know what I mean? They were always complaining about stupid shit. Like, that made no sense like they would order a shrimp quesadilla and be like oh I, i'm allergic to shellfish what the fuck did you order shrimp for like <laughs> next the next special is going to be spicy balls we're not going to say nothing about it we're going to glorify this dish and we're just going to burn everybody and he thought it was funny so i was like let's do it and i made this pineapple uh it was a pineapple and asian pear ghost pepper sauce it was the first sauce I ever made. It was just fucking Fancy. around. Yeah, I was just fucking around, you know, with the ingredients we had on hand and some fresh ghost peppers. And, uh, you know, they dared us, me and like two of the other guys, to just eat eat a ghost pepper straight in the kitchen while we were prepping one day. And I was like, all right, well, I mean, if I want to put it in the sauce, I got to try it, you know what I mean? So I ate the whole pepper. Or I just shoved the whole thing in my mouth. I didn't nibble. I just popped it and started chewing and cutting I was I was prepping and I was like shipping nodding herbs and stuff and I was just sitting there cutting and I started having the sweat and I was like man this is actually really good though like I'm not reacting I have a stone face and I look over at my buddy who ate it and he's directly across from me in tears beat red staring at me like in disbelief that I'm still cutting fucking herbs uh but yeah you know it led me to making that sauce and I thought people were going to be complaining about it, but they all loved it. And nice. So then yeah. that became your first professional hot sauce, sir. Huh? That was my first sauce, yeah. And then he's still selling it. Jeff said it was like you know he's like you know what man this is really good you should you should bottle sauce you know you should do this and I was like yeah 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 whatever man whatever <laughs> and then it took me going to like three more restaurants and then whipping up sauces for people who want wings and shit and all of people saying it was like three or four different head chefs they were all like dude you should bottle shit like this and then it clicked and i was like man you know what i should and then i i took a chance on it and i made my first official sauce as naughty norms which was watch your mouth I um love yeah your I, naming, man. I love your naming so much yeah thank you the watch your mouth was a fun story too. That's actually, I put that, I ended up putting that backstory on the side of the bottles to keep it that sauce family based because really what it took for me to pursue it was all of them chefs telling me that I should bottle it. And then just the memory of my aunt who said, you could do anything you want to do as long as you want to do it. And I was like, this is the shit I want to do. She's right. And, uh, yeah, she was the one who made me love hot sauce as a little kid. I, cause I would curse, you know, all the time. And she'd sit me down and tie them out and smack hot sauce on my tongue because soap didn't work and friggin' all these other tactics that any parent could try didn't work. You know, it just made me curse more because it pissed so me off. I you a chili head by trying to punish you chili head bot yes exactly <laughs> I love it. It turned off small with tabasco and stuff and i was just like you know i don't like that because it just tastes like vinegar it's gross <laughs> getting it out of my mouth but eventually she got up to blair's mega death sauce and that Ooh, was yeah. the, like real i think i'm pretty sure that's made with like extracts and everything like that shit's hot hot yeah man. 
I was like six years old. She's dabbing that on my tongue. I remember her the first drop hit my tongue. I sat back in my chair and looked up at her like, yo, what the hell are you doing to me? And she wanted to dash me again because she didn't try it. She cracked the bottle and then came to attack me with it. And <laughs> she came a couple more dashes and I'm like, oh no. And it's, I'm pulling my head away and it's all over my shirt. But yeah, that's that, that right there really it sounds like a torturous way to fall in love with hot sauce. But, but it made it, its fucking work, man. And now you've got a whole range, man. Give us a look. Give us a show and tell. Let's have a look at the range. What you got around you, baby? I actually, somebody, I, I got to I gotta show love for this because some the person who bought my very first bottle that I ever made sent me the bottle back after they used it. No way. So cool this fuck literally the very first bottle i ever made they put a little chili pepper uh Ooh. confetti <laughs> isn't that uh, sweet man wow keep that shit yeah. close to your heart man oh always that's irreplaceable um yeah. but yeah i put my daughter on the front just to keep it family oriented because my aunt coined the term watch your mouth when she would put the shit on my tongue and i wanted to basically build naughty norms up to give my daughter a life that I didn't have as a child. <clears throat> nice, nice way. So you build it up. Go on, baby. Show us some sources. Let's have a look. Tell us what you got, baby. Here's, here's another iteration. This was part two. Okay. There we go. Let's see. Uh, got the heartbreaker sauce. I believe What's this one... That? This one's almost sold out. This one was actually this one. I went through a crazy breakup and I was like, all right, man, how am I going to get over this shit? I decided to get over it by making this. I was <laughs> I'm going to let everyone feel my pain. So I got a, a whole slew. I think I had about 14, 15 pounds of hot peppers in this fresh hot peppers in this. Uh, got chocolate habaneros, ghost peppers, uh, chocolate ghosts. Uh, Big Mama Mustards, Scorpion Peppers, Reapers, uh, High Super Hots, Cayenne Peppers, Chipotles, and Anchos. Bitch, you got to wear a condom before you eat that shit. My yeah. God. Uh, that's what I, I necked first. So I took two nice gulps of that <laughs> for, for, our, for our first part of this interview. Oh, yeah, nope. that's right. For those of you who don't know, we were just necking hot sauce a short while ago. Yeah, that's right, man. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. I got from that one. Uh, let's see. Got... <laughs> this one right here is the most recent collaboration I did with Rude Boy Glass. Uh, a little, little 420 guy. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, I got to show my love for the smokers. Yeah, baby. That one was really fun. This one, I believe, I just sold out of online. This was this was my most mild sauce because everybody got tired of me fucking them up. They're like, let me get something <laughs> a little, a little more mild. So I came up. Are with we talking three. jalapenos? This, uh, yeah, I uh, okay. I do jalapeno. Uh, in this guy right here. That's a naughty looking bottle, naughty norm. Oh, very naughty. A little, a little poop on the back. Oh, it's cutting out of there. Yeah, baby. <laughs> nice. What's in it? What's in it? This one right here. Uh aged cayennes, jalapenos, honey, ancho chili, sage, and then a whole slew of uh seven ten products. <laughs> Concentrates. Fuck yeah. Yeah, hey, she's helping. Boys and girls out there in television land, you see, our boy there, Naughty Norm, is just not, not just naughty by nature. He's naughty with his hot sauce. I fucking strongly recommend you jump on Naughty Norm's website and you buy the fuck out of all the naughtiness. And uh, Norm, I'd say it's a really nice place for us to share an ending with the people here. Back to the fuck censorship, eh? Wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, Everybody, absolutely. absolutely. From me, from my boy out there in New Jersey, we're going to say fuck censorship. <laughs>
and big love to you. Ciao for now. Peace out. <laughs>